Well, welcome once again. This is the Doctor of Digital, the Doctor of Digital podcast. The purpose of the show is to transform your business and life with education and inspiration. I introduce busy business leaders to trends in business, technology, and marketing to highlight people you should know. What if a brush with death could spark a life of extraordinary achievement and purpose? My next guest, Janine Bolin, was struck by lightning as a young woman, an experience that not only spared her life, but ignited a passionate drive to live it to the fullest. This electrifying incident became the catalyst for a remarkable journey that has touched countless lives and spans multiple disciplines. Janine's impressive credentials include working as an analytical biochemist, homeschooling four children, authoring 17 books, and founding an online university. But her true calling emerged in 2010 when she was called into active service by the Thunder Clan, leading her to embrace her life's purpose as a spiritual and financial guide. Whether you know her as a financial first responder or a first chakra healer, Janine brings a unique blend of analytical experience and spiritual insight to help people achieve debt-free living, build successful businesses, and deepen their connection with their source. Join me as we explore this fascinating intersection of finance, spirituality, and personal growth with this truly electrifying guest. During this episode, we'll do a deep dive into the changes and hot topics of the leader of the Thunder Clan, its biggest challenges and growth. I will leverage the expertise of my guests and how to navigate the unique dynamics of the field. By the end of this episode, you'll be better equipped to know what to do, and I encourage you to contact my guest, Janine Bowen, who is also then a biochemist, author, homeschooler, and online university founder. With that, I'd like to welcome Janine to the program. Hi, Jean. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. I hope I can live up to the uh, intro that you did there. Thank you so much. No, it's uh, <laughs> very impressive. And that's what I say. We're chatting before the program. I said, yeah, we've got a lot of great things there. And so it's really a thrill of mine to have you on the program. So I'm very curious, you know, with a lot of guests, I say something like, well, how did you get this pivotal moment to do what you do currently? But it's almost like, well, now we know. So tell us more about this whole experience. This is awesome. Uh, well, when I was struck by lightning, I was in middle school. And so during that middle school time, it was really a non-event. And, and I know a lot of people are like, what are you talking about? Well, the best way I know to describe it is that my father was in the military and I was struck while I was standing in my living room and my mother saw the lightning come in. My sister was right across the living room from me and it came down and I was like totally blinded for a period of time. I was disorganized, I was confused. Sure. I couldn't think for a bit, but I wasn't burned. There were no burn marks on the floor. There were no burn marks in the ceiling. It was really a very weird sort of situation. And so when my father, when he was sleeping at the time and he came jumping out of bed because my sister screamed and she's not a screamer. And my, all he saw was my mother sitting there on the couch with a cigarette almost halfway to her lips, like stunned. Like, so he knew something had happened, but being right. a Vietnam veteran, you know, if you're not bleeding and if you're not down on the ground unconscious, you know, <laughs> then obviously everything's fine. He's going back to bed. So he's like, I thought somebody had died. And, and that's when my sister kind of spit out, Janine was struck by lightning. Like, you know, and he looks at me like, no, you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. he's still he's still in that stupor from sleep and he goes i thought it was something serious and off he went and we never talked about it again it was never mentioned and all that wow. so so a lot of people are like oh my gosh how can that be a non-event it was deemed so as a non-event and it didn't come back into my life till almost 40 years that's four zero 40 years later that i ran into a native american we were in a situation where he was helping me with my house because we had things happening that could not be explained by science and okay. anyway he as he was helping me with this house he asked me the question have you ever been struck by lightning and i said yes and that became a very defining moment for the rest of my life as far as my spiritual growth and my spiritual okay. work because you know <laughs> i have no native american blood that runs through my veins i cannot you know, say that I'm a part of any one tribe, but at the same time, I was tapped to and called into right. service uh, at that at that moment 40 years later. So that's kind of how I talk about it. So you're not Elizabeth Warren, I suppose. That's what you mean. <laughs> and so this has been something like 40 years. So I'm curious now, this is a long 
time. And, you know, yeah. someone like myself have been around for a while too. So what yes. changes have you seen over the last 40 years and how does this tie in to what you do in terms of being called and having a, this really a, a plan of service? It's kind of what I, I like to describe as I'm so entrepreneurial by nature. I work for myself. I'm a 1099 contractor, you know, that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, so that's really where my business has been. So what has it done for me? Uh, it basically, it's the philanthropic side of my okay. life. So it's the part of my life where I give service. I don't worry about getting money for what I do. I just do uh, what I am called to do. And then normally I ask people to help pay for gas and can they give me a place to stay while I'm doing whatever ceremony or help in whatever way I'm supposed to. So it's usually very, uh, any income I receive from that is laughable <laughs> if you were to look at it as far as amount of time versus, you know, but you know, that's where uh, it's giving back to a community that hmm. is in need of the services that um, I've been gifted. Yeah. In terms of entrepreneur, because I do have quite a few entrepreneurs to listen, and of course, a lot of us would like to be entre entrepreneurs. Are there some areas that you would say would be hot topics or topics that you think are particularly good for an entrepreneur if they were thinking about starting a business or they want to be an entrepreneur? Yes, I have a talk topic that when they ask me to speak at conferences like Entrepreneur and stuff like that, when they ask me to speak at those conferences, it's called the Wacky Way to Wealth. And the, what you do is you focus on sales. And a lot of people are like, yeah, I want to get into business. Yeah, I want to do all these things, but I don't want to be salesy. I don't, I don't want to be salesy. I'm sure. not that kind of person. I'm like, thank goodness, because if you're going to do well in business, you can't be those things. So bravo. So how are you going to sell your services? So I always focus on cash flow. What are you doing for your cash flow? How is your lead gym? What's happening with that? Because I've met so many entrepreneurs. They have brilliant ideas. They have really good solutions to people's pain points, sure. but they do not know how to get that across. They do not know how to sell. And so I always encourage if you are going into being an entrepreneur that you know how to do, they talk about relationship marketing. Yes. But what is your script for selling to people? Like, how do you let them know that you solve their particular pain point? How do you do that for them? So I stress income, revenue, profitability. I'm very much a numbers person in that regard. And so I'm always like, that is the number one thing that I see that's devastating that you hear about that 70 to 80% of businesses that don't make it the first year. And a lot of times it's because they may have received a $75,000 grant, but they have no system in place for increasing and continuing that revenue and that cash flow. And that is what will really devastate a business. Sure. You know, and I think such an unusual beginning point, I'm always then curious how, and you developed a unique approach and what groundbreaking ideas you have. And essentially it's what do you recommend people to do? So what would a person do if they would like to be an entrepreneur or would like to extend what they have done currently or how they've started and begun? How do they get going and keep going? Well, a lot of it is make sure that you have a private checking account, like make sure you have a checking account that's not your personal checking account. Right. I know this may sound like basics 101, but you would be surprised at the number of entrepreneurs that have been in business 14 years and they're still, they have not divided up their business account from their personal account. And I'm like, whoa, that's like number one. Number one is you have a separate account so that you can track the income and the re cash revenue that's happening through that business. The second thing is create an LLC if for no other reason than it just gives you a bit of a buffer so that if, God forbid, somebody decides they want to sue you or something like that, right. uh, you know, you've got a little bit of a buffer. I'm not saying it's the end all and be all, but, you know, it, it just, it's just just a layer, one additional layer for, before people can go through on that. So that's the first thing. And then if you did receive a $75,000 grant and now you feel like you can create your team and start podcasting and doing all these things, realize none of those, none of the things you just mentioned to me, I had this happen the other day, nothing that they told me they were going to do with that $75,000 was an income producing activity. Hello, you need IPAs. You've got to have income producing activities. And if you don't know what I'm talking about and you're in business, let's have a conversation, please.
Yeah. It, it, those are like say they're basic, but yes, you absolutely have to have them or you're really going to run into trouble, especially the separation of finances too, because you're going to run into some issues and it's very easy to get them confused. What's a personal expense? What's a business expense? And where was I? What are they doing? But having them two separate accounts, is, it's basic, but it's really important. When we talk about expertise, and I'm curious because you have a very wide range of expertise in different areas and different fields, can you talk about your expertise and in terms of what kinds of things you recommend, what can you do, what services do you provide for people? Um, as far as me personally, I'm a business development person. So sometimes they hire me to be the CSO. They want me to be the chief sales officer and I build out their sales team. Sometimes they just want me to come in and be their COO and run operations and create procedures and systems. Um, those are the sorts of things that I can come in and do. And so a lot of times that's the B2B work uh, that I'm doing, the business to business. For business to customer, like if you're an entrepreneur and you want some help from me, what we can do is have a couple of conversations first to see if I'm even worth the time, right? You may be so new or so novice at your business that there's other people that will help get you to that next step. Or you've been in business a long time and all of a sudden your cash flow has dried up and you don't know how to move forward with your lead gen. Uh, that's something that I can assist you with in that process. Yeah. So it's kind of, it's uh, full development, I guess, in some ways, because each one of those things have something to do with the business. And I think you can come in at different points mm -hmm. and that's what it sounds like. So kind of a, almost one size fits all in some ways. Are there things that you would recommend, say, what should business people be thinking about and what sort of actionable tips? I'm always curious of what a person can share. What should people be doing currently, given the state of the world, the situation, the country? What sort of tips would you recommend are good for this time period? The number one question every entrepreneur should be asking themselves right now is, why am I in business? Why did I get in business? I, I stump a few of the entrepreneurs that come to me. And when I talk to them, I say, okay, why'd you get into business? Well, and if they, if they start hemming and hawing and I get it and get into storytelling, like literally start t sharing a huge story. I'm like, you don't have a good enough vision yet. You need to get some crystal clear clarity. You need to have a target where you can tell me in 15 seconds or less why you got into business and not tell me a story because this isn't part of your marketing message. Tell yeah. me why you got into business. <laughs> and people look at me, well, all right, Janine, all right, put your money where your mouth is. Why did you get into business? I said, because I wanted freedom, not security. That's the thing about entrepreneurs. We trade security for freedom. Unless you understand that to the core of your being, you're going to really stink at being an entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we treasure our freedom more than our security. I am after a lifestyle. I am crystal clear on that lifestyle that I want for myself. And there is nothing that will get in the way of that lifestyle. When I start seeing my cash flow starting to dry up, I start churning and burning. I'll put in three, four months of 15 hours a day and only five days a week. A lot of people go seven days a week. No, five days a week because Saturday has things I do. Sunday has things I do. But Monday through Friday, I'll put in 15, sometimes 18 hour days for months at a time to get where I know I want to go because I treasure, I cherish mm -hmm. my freedom over my security. Do you find that there are people that have come fresh and started just to be an entrepreneur, let's say as a younger person, or do you find more people coming from corporations and saying, because it's, it's the freedom question I'm curious about, because having been in corporations, there's not a lot of freedom many times. Are they the people who make better entrepreneurs because they've seen the drawbacks? Or do you find that there are people who say, no, I just know from the very beginning or as a younger age, I just want to be an entrepreneur for myself? Um, I see all ages. It depends on the phase of life. The, the reason or rationale will change depending upon if somebody's in their 20s, 30s, 40s, or 50s, and they're just now testing out entrepreneurism. Okay. So depending upon the phase of life will dictate or determine why somebody is moving into the entrepreneurial space. And depending upon why they're moving into the entrepreneurial space will dictate the type of vision that they have for their business. And what I encourage people to do is 
build the perfect life. And so, oh man, they, people, you can, you can feel the resistance on these calls. When I have one. And I'll say, so I, have you built a vision board? And they're like, oh my God, if I have one more, you know, I am a high level corporate person. I've been doing X, Y, Z, P, D, Q. I am not going to sit there and cut out little pieces of paper and stick them on a vision board. I am not going back to kindergarten. I'm like, you need to go work with someone else. I'm not your coach. Because mm -hmm. unless you can tell me what it is that you are after, the type of life. And I use a vision board for that. I encourage them not to put words on their vision board, just pictures, because you want the emotion. What is it that you're after? Uh, what it kind of life? Because what we're going to do is we're going to build your life that you want for yourself, and we're going to fit the business into the cracks. People get it flipped, and they go after the business and the vision, and the next thing you know, they've created a perfect job, again, exactly like corporate, only they're working in their own business. They're working three times as hard, getting paid a quarter of what they made, and they don't know how their next paycheck is going to look, right? So that's what we're trying to prevent by using the vision board and making sure that they're building a life for themselves, and then they're fitting the business into the cracks. I'm curious if you could elaborate a little bit on And I'm thinking of the, the process. Let's say, you know, I'm always reminded of the phrase from Isaiah, I quote this all the time, without a vision, the people perish, because I think visions are really important, because if you don't have that, you don't know where you're going unless you have some sense of it. But could you walk us through the process of helping a person or assisting somebody to move into being an entrepreneur, starting with maybe a vision board or something along those lines? Well, we start with a vision board, and then we move right into self-discipline. <laughs> and discipline has a bad bad connotation. No. Somebody needs to work on their PR or something like that because everybody immediately thinks, oh, discipline. Now I'm back to being five and I have mother shaking her finger at me. They put themselves in that kind of mode. And I'm like, no, no, no. Self-discipline is mastery. You know, once you master yourself, that is what self-discipline is. Once you have disciplined the self, then you can't, you are unstoppable as an entrepreneur. Yeah. And so that's what we end up doing. And you may know it as time management, but I don't call it time management. I call it self-discipline. See, I'm trying to scare away people because I, I figure if I use scary enough words, they won't want me as a coach. I'll refer them to other people because some people want to be held by the hand. And I'm like, no, as an entrepreneur, you cannot be held by the hand. You want that when you're learning a new piece of tech when you're learning a new piece of software or somebody is saying, oh, this CRM is the best thing since sliced bread, let me walk, you want somebody to walk you by the hand through that. But when it comes to your personal vision and the type of life that you're after for yourself, mm. that's self-discipline there. Are you going to do what is necessary to achieve that life that you want for yourself? And the answer for me is a wholehearted yes and get out of my way. And that's where I become very much like Patton, General Patton. It was like lead, follow, or get that F out of my way. <laughs> you know, It's like, because I will be happy to follow if you're leading, especially if you and I's visions are simpatico. But if you're not leading and you're not going to follow me, then get out of my way because you're wasting my time. I don't have time for that. And I know uh, I love Gary Vandercheck for that. <laughs> I know a lot of people don't like him, but I'm like, no, these are successful self-disciplined masters of their craft. You know, if he was a potter, you would admire him. But because he's an entrepreneur and he makes lots of money, you kind of resent him for that. But you don't understand the time and effort that went into making of that. So are there, there qualities that you would say would make an ideal entrepreneur? So it's a couple of things you mentioned, having a vision, self-discipline. So if a person was thinking, I would like to be an entrepreneur, are there characteristics or things that you find are common with the people that you work with? Oh, yeah. We're too stubborn to give up. That's our problem. <laughs> uh, think Marine. Think a Marine. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of people like to give Marines a bad time. You know, they call them crayon eaters and what have you. And I'm like, you need to be stubborn like that. You need to have the discipline like that. You need a team that's cohesive like what the Marines build. And a lot of people will call it cultish and, you know, they just don't like the military mindset at all. And I'm like, let me explain something to you. That mindset is what will get you through those hard times. So do you have a vision? You know, almost every successful team has a very clear vision. Do you have your own motto? You know, for me, it's too stubborn to give up or too stupid to give up or, you know, whatever I'm feeling in the moment that day. <laughs> And the other thing is, is 
is this vision worth you putting your life energy into it? If it is, then why are you giving up on a dream? Are you kidding me? You know, so they're like, oh, you need to be realistic. Entrepreneurs are not realistic. <laughs> if we were realistic, we would never have done this. What kind of crazy person gives up freedom for security? All right. Or security for freedom. freedom yeah. it, right. You know, the, the, the smart ones, as some people would say, who are being realistic are the ones who are secure in their job and they like their job. And I, we're not talking to those people. I'm just talking to the people who, if you don't like your job, then make sure you keep your job and then you move into entrepreneurship. Right. And then when you have that legion taken care of and you've got the processes in place that are going to give you the income that you need, then you can think about shifting over into entrepreneurism. But I would recommend that you don't jump. <laughs> yeah. So we've talked about some changes, some hot topics, characteristics of entrepreneurs. I'm curious now with a full range of things that you can offer. How do people get a hold of you? And I highly encourage people to reach out because you do have a very vast repertoire of things in your background. I have meetings a couple times a month that you can sign up for. If you okay. go to the eight gates.com and you can put it in the show notes if you like. I have a thing called Open Friday Coffee. Um, but then I also have other meetings where on that page where if you can't make it to Open Friday Coffee, there are other free events that you can sign on to and join the group or join my community and ask questions of me and find out if I'm somebody you want to do business with or not. But that's the best way to do that. I, I had to stop doing one-to-ones when I got to a point where I was spending 11 and 15 hours a week on one-to-ones. And so I started doing group sessions that way because okay. I just had to open up my calendar. Sure. And you want that freedom, right? So. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. You know, you get stubborn and you figure out solutions and then, People will be like, well, isn't that arrogant? It's like, no, it has nothing to do with arrogance. It has everything to do with self-discipline and time management. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Janine, thank you so much. I appreciate you taking some time because I know you are busy and you value your freedom. So thank you for taking some time out and chatting and really offering a number of really key insights for people. So I really appreciate you know, all you had to say and the insights that you shared today. Uh, my pleasure. And thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to share because I believe like Thomas Jefferson, as long as this country has farmers and entrepreneurs will be just fine. Absolutely. Thanks again. Appreciate it. Be well. Well, if you like what you're hearing, and I certainly did, and I learned a lot, you know, hopefully what you're doing is also supporting the program. I want to thank the sponsors of the Dr. Digital Podcast, those publishers who have also published a couple of books that is on track, Ian Hunter, and also Burning America, available on Amazon. If you like the show, make sure that you're liking, subscribing, positively reviewing, and sharing with everybody you know. Also want to make sure that you come out to the Facebook page, Check it with that, and I'll help business leaders, CEOs, and entrepreneurs break through their obscurity through oral and written communications and presentations, building credibility and authority. So join Mastering Presentation Secrets on Facebook. Until next time, this is the Dr. Digital signing off. Deus Vault. <laughs>